Hey guys, let's install Red Hat Linux 8 from more than 20 years ago. So I managed to get my hands on an ISO file. Thank God for archiving services. We might need all three CDs or we may just need one. So back in 2002, this version caused a few waves. Some people didn't like the more corporate, almost Windows, like direction Red Hat was heading in. The UI was a big step up from other distros of its time though. Checking the CD was a thing back then. Wow, this brings back memories. So these icons and graphics that you see here were a big step up. Red Hat were the first to apply a consistent theme to both GNOME and KDE, so much so that you could barely tell them apart. A lot of people in the Linux community were not big fans of this at the time. So I might speed these up in the edits, and of course, I'll stop if I get to anything interesting. So this is old school. We have support for a PS2 mouse, as well as a serial one. These were way, way before USB mice, and especially before wireless mice. Also, a scroll wheel on a mouse was not that common. I remember being super impressed when I upgraded from two button to three button. Now here's the fun bit. Distros don't even give you much options these days. You just need to pick a flavor like KDE, GNOME, or XFCE. When you had to install via CDs, however, you got this option for custom. And it was basically this massive list of packages you could spend all weekend customizing. Fun times. Now, partitioning was a dangerous business back then. Let's see. In the 2000s, the version was XT3, and we even have XT2 here. You almost always had to have a swap partition as well. So we shall pick both KDE and GNOME, and let's see what else. There's so many packages here, of course we shall pick games and start the actual install. CD2, it is. Let me see if I can work out how to do this. Okay, so we are back. The rest of it got installed. Now we are on the first run screen. It will probably ask me for a few more things before we can access the system. So we have liftoff. We also seem to be having some screen sizing issues, but boy, do these icons look good. Let me see if I can fix the screen.
Okay, restarting the VM seemed to have fixed the sizing and we are logged into GNOME. This menu and these icons look so good. There was obviously some inspiration taken from Windows. The general look of the start menu or the Red Hat menu, I think it was put in place to make Windows users feel at home. This may have also been the distro they introduced OpenOffice version one. Let's look through some of these themes. There's even one called Redmond, which is where I think Microsoft HQ is or was. Yeah, I distinctly remember. With UI, being able to change both the inner Chrome and the outer window dressing. But I don't think that's a thing now. I think I'll settle on Metasty. Wow, and we have KPPP, or KDE's point-to-point -point protocol, otherwise known as your modem dialer. It's wild to think that you actually needed to connect to the internet when you needed to go online. It wasn't just always on. So before we move on to check out KDE, let's have a quick look at the control center. This looks so much like the control panel on Windows 98. Okay, so if you hadn't seen me swap the desktop environment earlier, you would have not believed this is KDE. It looks so similar. You can sort of tell with apps like Conqueror, it looks very KDE-like, but really it's such a well-made consistent theme. KDE, as always, back in the day, was a lot more customizable than GNOME. Okay, guys, that's as good a place as any to end this. Let me know in the comments what Linux distro you were rocking back in the day. Or even if you're a newer user, what's your favorite distro? You're a GNOME kid or a KDE kid? Anyway, until next time.